following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your lovable, humble, squeezably soft host. As always, we'd like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we've had a little bit up and a little bit down. We're at 2841.85 on the S&P cash. Uh, Dow's up 55, Nasdaq's up 35, Russell's off one. It's been kind of the weak sister all day long, the Russell, I mean. Uh, and uh, you got a little bit more out here, but again, uh, we went from oh, a little over 10 billion shares on Friday to about just a hair over 7 billion yesterday, so fairly quiet. Uh, as we start to show off, we're just a hair over 4 billion. And I don't think, I think we probably would have had 3.5 billion if we didn't have a little uh, news blip come out here saying that the Chinese uh, were uh, playing uh, a uh, game of give and take. Um, as I said before, it is nothing new out here. These things take forever. Uh, there is a reason why, and that is until someone gets worn out, no one is going to declare victory. Uh, at some point, someone has to give, and that has to be enough to seal the deal. And, of course, uh, you got to save face. Uh, it doesn't matter what country you're in. It's got to look like you, uh, you had a giant negotiation, and it was the absolute best you could do, even if you could have had it nine months ago. Doesn't matter. Uh, the proof of the pudding in there for those people in the State Department is to drag it out forever. Um, you know what? Few things in the State Department ever go quick, and that's uh, basically uh, uh, unconditional surrender. That's about it. Those things generally work out fairly well. Uh, when everybody tries to nu nuance, and uh, give everything kind of 50 shades of, I wouldn't say gray, 50 shades of, uh, of uh, yeah, maybe it is gray. Uh, it is problematic. Anyway, uh, volume's okay. Uh, actually, would be poor if we probably didn't have that little hiccup earlier in the day. Uh, but again, uh, I think we probably go negative by the end of the day. Uh, there was a lot of push at the very beginning of the day, and the volume was horrible. Yesterday, uh, first hour or so, the volume was horrible. Today, kind of the same thing. The only reason we have decent volume is because of that uh, little hiccup. Uh, today's the last day of options rollover. And, of course, then we go into the Fed, the Fed meeting uh, uh, results tomorrow. And I guess it's got an asterisk after it. It's not clear, but I, I assume that means uh, that they will have a meeting starting at 2.30 Eastern time, normally running to about 3.15. And it's almost like the markets uh, decided to mark it up as high as it can and see if uh, Mr. Powell will blink. Uh, but uh, we're kind of 12, 13 points off the high of the day in the S&P already. And, of course, the Dow already hit uh, 26,000. Got to put on your party hat. Then you got to take off your party hat. Um, what is it right now? 25 at 9.53. So it's a lot of wind up, um, kind of like a pitcher that keeps circling the mound and scratching himself and spitting. Um, it's all about the Fed tomorrow. And I suspect that the Fed is way oversold uh, what it will be willing to do, uh, that it, that the whole thing on bonds has probably been a lot of jaw boning, jaw, yeah, jaw boning, uh, and we'll see. But yeah, I don't 
expect we go out this day positive on at least on the S&P cash. Might be able to break even on the NASDAQ. Man, are people pushing this market with light volume. A ton of stocks. We went through a lot of those yesterday. Uh, and that's about it. So we'll go through some more stocks. We'll look at some ETFs, see if that we see anything in the tea leaves. But uh, in, eh, before that, uh, we will uh, do a little history. And then we'll get to the meat of the show uh, in the next segment. So uh, let's do a little history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And yes, on this day in 2003, the United States, along with the coalition forces, uh, primarily from the United Kingdom, uh, initiates a war on Iraq just after explosions began to rock bad dag. Uh, Iraqi's capital, U.S. Uh, President George W. Bush announced a televised address. Um, always kind of interesting to see these things 15 years later. Uh, always love the people that say that they didn't have any mass uh weapons of mass destruction. I then have to ask them about the 500 metric tons of uranium they had that eh, good for making about 120 nuclear weapons, uh, depending on what size they want. But eh, if you're just talking your run-of-the-mill one megaton bomb, uh, enough to flatten a city, eh, 120 of them. Uh, and, of course, they had bought all the plans from AQ Khan from Iraq to build those weapons uh, in a uh, almost uh, Freudian slip. Uh, they decided to push out almost 500,000 uh, pages of documentation about how they were actually engineering nuclear weapons at the moment uh, that we invaded them. Uh, those were all made uh, for the uh, benefit of all the countries surrounding them, especially uh, 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 Iran. They were deathly afraid that they would get reattacked. Uh, the thought that maybe they had a nuclear weapon, I thought, would keep them off. Uh, they did such a great job that we believed them. And that's uh, it. Uh, they did have uh, centrifuge weapons. Uh, that stuff went to uh, Syria at the, just before the uh, war broke out. Uh, so the question is, do they have any weapons of mass destruction? Well, yes and no. Uh, in the uh, local, um, um, what do they call it down here, the uh, Veterans Hospital, uh, at one time we had 195 people that had been exposed to uh, sarin nerve gas and some other nerve gases while they were over there. Um, certainly the stuff was around. It was old. But it still worked enough to put um, hundreds across the nation uh, in uh, the bill. So was it all about that? Everybody says it was about the oil. Um, I think it was probably a lot less about the oil and the fact that uh, Saddam had sent uh, assassins to kill not only the president's uh, father, uh, but the uh, previous um, president, too, Mr. Clinton, President Clinton. So on this day in 2003, an adventure in the Mideast. We'll be back after this break. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And as we return, I uh, got a request to today to look at uh, airline stocks after uh, Boeing and what's going on with them. Uh, let's uh, leave that on, turn that on, and get that back. Uh, certainly headed back lower uh, and kind of interesting in the fact that we have had at least moderating fuel prices for a while. Of course, they're up a little bit. Uh, we've talked about the reasons for that. Uh, tomorrow, of course, we'll get the EIA numbers, and after the bell tonight, the uh, other numbers, the private numbers, the double top secret numbers uh, at, uh, what, 430, 445. Again, I don't think that any of this uh, really uh, matters much at the moment uh, for oil. Uh, this is the uh, rollover period, and uh, a lot of things can uh, skew the results. Uh, Basically, by the time you get through the end of April, you're done with the rollover uh, in gasoline from the winter to summer formulas at the refineries, and uh, everybody's kind of back into business right now. It's pretty easy to raise prices on literally everything because uh, it's kind of everybody's cut back. If you can't turn on your well, if you're doing uh, repairs on the refineries, there just isn't a lot. You've put a lot in. Uh, storage, but uh, that's about it. Uh, anyway, uh, gold's up about five dollars and sixty cents today. Silver up six cents. Platinum up nineteen eighty. Uh, copper still stuck uh, below kind of the psych psychological level that really matters, which is about three bucks. Uh, and uh, telling you that the economies uh, of the world's expanding. Uh, Two dollars ninety two and a half cents which is up about half a percent, but again, been playing around there for a while. In other sectors, we still have the TLT uh, effectively unable to break out of this area from about 120 to 122, uh, solidly stuck in there. When we look at the dollar index, uh, it has finally broken back under 96. So the question is whether 97 was a long-term top. Uh, the government has been working, at least the U.S. government treasury, has been working extremely hard to keep uh, the dollar fluctuations to a minimum. And my guess is they probably come back in tomorrow and show this up. They like that 90, 
six level. So maybe 95 is a low, 97 is a high, uh, as long as they can hold it there before the markets force them out of it. Uh, anyway, American Airlines, as we said, uh, fuel prices kind of moderate, at least what they've been historically. Um, you got like a whole lot of no volume here today. Again, there are a lot of these uh, 737s uh, in the United States. Um, I had a couple people ask me uh, what I thought about the Boeing thing. Uh, pretty interesting that none of the planes uh, that were ordered with the, the dual sensors for the uh, angle of attack have had any issues. Uh, those, if they don't agree, if one's wrong or broken, uh, that um, it doesn't have a problem. That may be the easy fix for Boeing. We'll look at them in a minute. Um, anyway, the uh, uh, just you know when you're going sideways for five days, very tough to figure out anything. You are back in to what is the support area uh, that goes back to the January third. Uh, December 26th low, you kind of bounced at those lows. You are coming back, and energy is a little lighter. Wouldn't be surprised to see in a month or so crude start to going down and uh, eh, probably looking at in the rearview mirror on the Boeing issue. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? Um, Alaska Air Group did break through with energy through the previous lows. It's now back up to that resistance. Uh, DAL, um, one of the stronger of the ones, uh, certainly been banging against the February 19th high. That was $52.22. Uh, it's 5208. And, uh, okay. Ah. <sighs> And see, yeah, so you had the volume, you just couldn't hold it. Energy was about the same in the way up on the down. Again, it's gone sideways for four or five days. Not a whole lot in that either. Jet blue. Uh, uh, again, well, four or five days. Okay, so you're going to get a move out of the airline stocks. And it's probably going to be significant. Southwest, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days going sideways. Now I understand why they wanted me to look at the airlines out here. Spirit Airlines banging against uh, the lows from January 3rd. That had 1.4 million shares at 52.52. Uh, briefly went below it uh, on lighter volume, on 35% lower volume on May 8th. Bounced. Now it's pulled back. Uh, decent volume yesterday, a million shares. Up today on 384,000 shares. So it doesn't look like anything's ready to move here yet. UAL, the last one in this sector, as we look, uh, and just back again to support levels uh, in Continental, United Continental, uh, going back from the 24th of December into the 15th of January. So you've had a little pop, you had a pull back. Um, just doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on there, other than the fact that these things certainly are winding up. Uh, a break below, I think, would be significant. And the question is whether or not, with all the harangue about Boeing, uh, what is the question of how many people are actually buying uh, this, thinking that they're getting it on a deal? Uh, Boeing has found very good support uh, going back to the 30th of January. And this gapped up on 12.7 million shares. Again, no one knows what's going on f for real. Um, we do have kind of an idea. They do know that the uh, control surfaces with the jack screw had it pointed straight at the ground. Uh, but we continue to hear reports over there that it was on fire. Probably not a software issue if it was on fire and trailing smoke. Um, but uh, we, uh, you do have fairly decent support. And again, today, very light volume in comparison uh, to the recent uh, times, maybe 7 million shares so far today compared to the 35 million shares we had back on the 11th. So no sign this is going to break, but no sign that it's going to bounce either. But certainly, 
a lot of people stepping in at this level. And the question is, how fast do we get uh, what it will take to fix and what the cause was uh, for this? And uh, the question is, if we just need to add a second uh, uh, sensor on the side of the plane. For those uh, that don't fly, there's a uh, a little uh, like if you want to if you, you if you saw it, you just say it was a wind vane from the top of somebody's house on the side of the plane, and it tells how uh, what the direction of the plane is compared to the wind going over the wings. So at one point, oh, going to the break. At one point, uh, you could stall, which is the whole reason for the ballyhoo. We'll be back in a minute. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then and head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we have an email coming in across the ether. Uh, Pete asking about JBHT, which is JB. Hunt transportation services as a short. Um, energy is about the same on the way up, on the way down. What you don't have is there any real volume uh, against this gap from the 18th of January where it went up on 2 million shares. First time it tried with 1.2 million shares January 23rd, spiked it again on March 8th with 1.36 million shares. So you know you're going to get 
a little bit more of a test out here. Now, today, you're down back into that level with 400,000 shares. So um, I wouldn't probably go long this, but I definitely wouldn't go short. Um, we had one that we were talking about yesterday. Uh, to was that yesterday? Yeah, and that was what B something, wasn't it? Can't remember the name of it now. Yeah, Greenbrier. Um, transportation sector doesn't look all that bad. You got the GBX, which is the Greenbrier, making some nice lows. Now this one I like a little better, but again, these things have about the same energy on the way up as they do on the way down. This one looks probably a little bit better out here. And these guys make uh, train cars for the rails. Uh, what is it? CVX, CXVC, XS. What is it? I eh, can't remember it right now. I'll think about the other railroad companies. Um, let's go back and look at a handful of others that I had on my list of stuff to take a look at. Uh, let's go to the QQQs, see all the stocks that I normally don't look at. Adobe had earnings kind of pulled back a little bit uh, on the gap down. It's trying to push its way back up. Had a lot of volume on the pullback. Never had any volume at the at the real highs going into that 260 area. Got up to 269.80 and reversed back down and now pushing back up. Um, this one always looked a little bit better to me. Uh, if you got back up to a 262, 265, um, it's been hanging out on no volume for a while. Uh, Autodesk, take a quick look at that one. Uh, this one spiked the high, did so with about the same volume as previous high, pulled right back into the trading range. This one again, um, up a little, what, 155.91 uh, for the last tick. Uh, but again, you probably want to pull the trigger against that uh, August 27th high at 159.94, as long as there is no volume, you've had energy to the downside on it. Uh, AMAT, look at that one. Uh, applied materials uh, in the SMHs, had a lot of volume a couple of days ago, but could not break the highs. 41.24 with 10 million shares. He had 23 million shares two days ago on that Friday options expirations. So maybe a little bit of an anomaly, uh, but what you don't have is volume yesterday, 7.6 million shares today, 3.9 million shares. My guess though is that they'll push this up into uh, the Fed meeting yesterday. And if you continue to have no volume, that's where a lot of these look like they could have some majorly sick reversals. Uh, AMD, huge day today going back up into a 62 million share day of $25.52 from February 25th. Uh, you've got that on 96 million shares today. I didn't look at the news on that real quick. Let's see what it is. Do, 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 do. Okay, Google has a partnership for a new video game streaming service. So. I'm going to say more of a short squeeze than anything else because I don't see how that could actually make a lot of money uh, for AMD. But you got the volume. Uh, again, you want uh, something to break above that February 25th. Uh, good question about whether or not this is a possible uh, selling or a buying exhaustion move in AMD uh, and a pullback to uh, the 2103. I don't see a lot of reasons why AMD should performing that well. Uh, I don't see much in Amgen. Let's take a look at AMZN, the big one. Again, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Da -da -da -da. Uh, so you're back up to the previous high. Right now you got 4.3 million shares going into two highs that were just under 7 million shares. So you want to watch the volume coming in to the end. Um, again, just all of these stocks have had light energy all the way back up into these highs and really haven't been blowing out the highs with a lot of volume. Uh, ASML, 
Uh, let's do this. Okay, up on seven points right now on the S&P cash on most of the exchanges. Okay. Uh, do, 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 what do we have? Uh, yeah, it's just back into that. Got a quick question. Look at the SMHs. See if there's anything going on in those. I mean, you just pushed back up. You didn't have a lot of juice. Um, I mean, you're one, what, two bucks from the September 5th high, 109.87. You need 7 million shares. Uh, you got, uh, what today? 5 million shares so far. 5.2 million shares. So could you get to the 109.87? You could. Um, this last little bit, though, has just been on pathetic volume for a number of days as we pushed higher. Avago up uh, strongly over the last couple of days after earnings. Uh, had a lot of people uh, short that just before it went higher. Didn't really have that much of a short uh, uh, basis on it, but blew up higher at 14 million shares on Friday last week, 6 million shares yesterday, under 6 million. Today, 3.6 million shares. Again, I don't think that this looks any different than the rest of them. That is that they go a little higher for a few days and then pull back into the trading range. Uh, Baidu still bouncing around the lows, not a lot of juice. Uh, China, uh, and a lot of these companies in China, um, the I think the writing's kind of on the wall. Uh, that there's a lot of problems over there that are going to come home to roost uh, if they're chickens. Bookings.com, um, of course, blew up uh, in the last earnings cycle uh, down on the 28th of February with almost 2 million shares. Coming back in, the question has been where to short this thing. And if you get back up here about 1825, I think that's about the best you're going to be able to do on that one. Let's take a look at uh, some other ones. Uh, Costco, uh, back up pretty much to the previous highs. Uh, energy uh, and even the earnings were pretty bad on Costco. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. They kind of promised a lot in the future, but certainly weren't in the earnings. Uh, it did gap up the next day. I don't know, maybe that's more about retail than anything else. Uh, anyway, you're back up with about the same volume that you've had before at the highs. Light volume today, though. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, Cisco up on fairly light volume, 11.2 million shares, 18.9 uh, million shares yesterday. A little bit of a pullback. Again, kind of hard to beat a monopoly uh, when your competitors are all Chinese communists trying to hack every router in the world and give you a pre-hacked router. Uh, so Cisco, probably not one of the ones that you want to be shorting anytime soon. Uh, two, 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 two. Okay, CSX. This is what I wanted to talk about uh, in the uh, rails. Uh, you had nice volume and enough volume that you should have been able to bust out uh, the $74 area on CSX. You had highs on November 16th and December 3rd. Uh, you've gone through that with uh, the kind of volume that you wanted to kind of see up here now kind of pushed up here today with 2 million shares and a little bit of a reversal. Um, again, energy is not off as bad as some stocks, but still off about 15% on the way back up off the December 26 low. Uh, but bring uh, a breakout in CSX may be a signal that you can look at the uh, uh, Greenbrier companies uh, for making the uh, rail cars. To do what else do we have? We want to look at here. Centos, C T A S, uh, coming back into this huge gap down uh, from the September 26th, down on 2.3 million shares. You pierced it on March 4th with 400,000 shares. You've been dissed coming up here. And again, as I've said before, any close. Below a nine-day moving average, pretty much, or a three-by-three three displaced moving average is going to be a pretty big sell signal. We haven't got any of those yet, so it's not time to uh, throw a Hail Mary. But uh, certainly very interesting patterns up here in that any slip at all could be extremely bearish, but we haven't gotten those signals yet. Uh, Dollar Tree, when we look at this one, um, it has... Uh, got kind of a fairly decent signal. Uh, if uh, this thing goes back above a nine day or three by three, the next close below it would be a pullback to about 96, 97. Electronic Arts. Just talk about a stock that's been going sideways for a while. Uh, back to the 21st of February till now, this thing has done nothing but go sideways. A uh, good uh, suggestion that you've either got accumulation or you've got huge distribution. Uh, I haven't been able to ferret that out so far, uh, but it's not uh, distribution absolutely at the lows, but there is very light volume. I'd watch this, have it on your radar over the next few days. eBay, again, uh, a lot of these stocks uh, in the next couple of days, if they have any close below, uh, three by three displaced moving average during the nine day have monster sell signals. Uh, in eBay, it would take you from this $37 range back to the 32 range fairly quickly. Uh, Expedia, um, 
And just kind of in a downtrend, a little bounce today. This one still looks like it wants to come back 108.11. Uh, fasten all, nuts and bolts in America. Another one that uh, up on very light energy, any close below the three by three would say that there's weakness in the industrial sector. I probably would short it. I would look at it as a canary in the coal mine. Facebook has been on a sell for a while. We've talked about this pattern where it went above and then the next close under the three by three. You can actually see it in this one where you've had the three down days. And today, kind of going a little sideways into yesterday's, but not making a whole lot. Uh, certainly looks like 155 is the first target uh, on this pullback for Facebook. Uh, FISV, and eh, nothing in that one. Uh, to, to, to what we have, Fox. Fox Mulder. Uh, let's take a quick look at the evil that is Google. See if there's anything in this one. Uh, again, holding up on the uh, three by three, but you only need a few bucks for this thing to come back. Uh, a failure and a close below three by three would imply a move back to about 1120 bucks. So that'd be interesting. Hasbro. Uh, just going sideways. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Got a lot of these stocks that are winding up to make some huge pitches uh, whenever they break which way they're going. Okay. IDX. Intel. Uh, not much to report on Intel. Da -da 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 -da. As we look at that, um, would InBev be accumulation? Let's take a look at that one. Yeah, not so much. Generally, what you're looking at as either accumulation at lows or distribution at highs is a big order. And that order pretty much you just see it in there every day. And that is, if you were looking for accumulation on InBev, the last two days, not today, but last two days are what you want to see. And that is the body of the candles all kind of coming back in at a price range. You had kind of a little pop out here. Now, could it be accumulation? It could, but it's not huge accumulation. Uh, but if this thing, if all the lows of the day whether it was a, a bullish or a bearish candle that day, we're all around that same price. You know someone's stepping in there on the days that it's bad and the days that it's good, but they're saying, you know what, I'll pay 520 for this thing. Won't pay any more. Uh, when it gets down below to 520, uh, I'll just go ahead and continue to buy as long as people are willing to sell. When it goes over 520, I kind of give up. And that kind of makes that sideways uh, movement that is a little bit less volatile than InBev. Uh, not a bad pattern. Uh, again, a lot of these out here, you're above the three by three, so you've got to figure that you're not doing all that bad. Into it, uh, another one of these stocks uh, that looks like on a parabolic move could fail in the next couple of days. Very light volume today, 882,000 shares. Uh, the next close below the three by three displaced or nine day moving average to me would be a short signal. Intuitive surgical up a little bit today. Uh, this one has been on nothing but fumes for a while. Same thing. The next move below that, uh, I suspect, would be uh, a signal. Uh, crane, okay. What do we have out here? Clack. Semis back up. Now, this one much, much weaker than AMAT and some of the others, just kind of tra trailing up higher as much uh, or many of the stocks. But we're back now, back into the J uh, July 31st high of 2018 with 5 million shares. Uh, you got into it with uh, 1.7 million shares yesterday. Today, just 592,000 shares. I don't think we've got earnings for CLAC coming soon, but I will check it during the break.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we kind of coast into the close here of the show. Uh, 2840 on the S&P Cash, which is up a uh, hair more than seven points on the day. Of course, that's way off the... Um, 2852 42 high of the day earlier so we'll have to see how the market actually closes back in i do suspect though that we could have a little selling and probably a little selling into the mar uh, tomorrow morning before the fed meeting it looks like they really push this market very hard so i suspect we probably see some people looking for the uh, door before the fomc meeting and then we'll have probably some volatility after that We'll have to keep an eye on it, but I don't see a lot going on other than probably a little selling today before the close and then some selling uh, in the morning after the open and then waiting for the FOMC meeting and then the uh, uh, discussion at 2.30, which won't be over till about 3.15 or 3.30, somewhere in that range. Um, what else do we have? Let's go ahead and look at some of these other stocks. Uh, Lulu. Don't see a lot in that one. Uh, Micron, I've been pushing up a bit uh, just into this gap down from the 5th of uh, March. That was uh, 29 million shares on the way down. Then you got about 25 million shares on the way up. Um, not bad. A uh, lot worse out here. Uh, Maxim Integrated Products. 
Uh, again, a lot of these semis uh, could roll over. This one looks like one that could. Uh, to, to, to Netflix. I've uh, been hanging out against these 371.49 high of February 25th. He had 7 million shares. He had 7 million shares uh, on on uh, yesterday. And not a lot on that one. Again, watch a lot of these stocks because a lot of them are set up. Any pullback below the nine day 3x3 three three displaced moving average would be fairly bearish on most of them. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you here tomorrow. Same fat channel, same fat time.